All right, all right, all right. It's new currency recording, recording from Platoon Studios in London. Tiffany Calver, introduce yourself. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany Calver, and this is New Currency, 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 <laughs> Currency. All right, so Tiffany, what do you do? Oh, I don't even know where to start with that question. Um, currently, I DJ and I have a radio show. I think that's pretty much that's pretty much it. And then behind the scenes. I throw events sometimes, I curate things sometimes, I ghost A&R things sometimes, I executively produce projects sometimes. I think I just do anything I feel like doing in the moment so, <laughs> for the most part, yeah. And how do you manage all that and or like what's the skill to um, being, I mean, having different hats that sort mm. of like plays all these roles? Um, do you know what? I think for the most part, the most beautiful thing I find about being in music is I feel like everything kind of complements each other. Mm. So it's a really easy transition or if you really are a fan of something or if you are a fan of music, it's so easy to kind of fall into something else because for the most part, I feel like the thing that matters is your opinion mm. and I'm a very opinionated person. So um, yeah, for me, it's just... If I'm passionate about something, I'll do it. I'll find time. I'm a bit of a vampire, so that probably helps. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So, yeah, just finding time, being passionate about shit, having an opinion seems to be working out okay so far. So how do you develop that opinion? Because obviously people come to you for that opinion, right? Yeah. And and then, and when I mean opinion, I mean like your individual voice, even when it comes to your DJ sets or sort of your perspective when it comes to A&Ring or mm. putting on an event. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've just always, I've always been quite an opinionated person. Like, um, the way I was brought up when I was like, just being around my mother, like she is an entrepreneur, like she has her, she had her own businesses. She sold them now, but watching somebody that you kind of idolize run things mm -hmm. and be unapologetically like opinionated and just herself was a really good person to be around growing up because even when it comes down to things like your top five favorite rappers, like I will, I, well, I probably can't do that now. If I'm completely honest. Like it changes every week, but like, that's a really tough, that's like life or death for me. I hate yeah. that question. Um, but yeah, it just, it helped me shape myself because I just wanted to know who I was mm. as opposed to like fitting in or doing certain things. So even like growing up, I immersed myself in like so many different phases of music. <laughs> like I've literally had an emo fringe. Like I used to wear multicolored Stan Smiths to like gym class and think I was Missy Elliott. Like <laughs> I've done everything. Like I was really into garage. I was really into dubstep. Then it, when Skrillex made dubstep weird, I was like really into that shit as well. And I've e uh, uh, EDM, mm, Flostradamus. Yeah. <laughs> I liked Flostradamus. Um, even as far as like when I would be in um, St. Lucia because I kind of spent my childhood back and forth between the UK and the Caribbean. I was really exposed to like country music and just my upbringing in general. I kind of didn't, didn't have a choice to like follow anybody else's opinion mm. but my own because mm. I was just exposed to so much yeah. and so many people and so many different things. So yeah, it just comes naturally and even to like, I think Jevin, who is in the room right now, <laughs> we've stolen his studio to do this. I think he can vouch for me. And I've kind of mastered the art of not being necessarily nice about things, but like people know that it comes from a good place. Mm. So like whether it's a bad thing or a good thing, I'm saying it for your benefit. It's yeah. never like, this is trash, like throw it in the bin. It would yeah. be like, I feel like we could do this. You could do this. Mm. You're better than than this like etc etc yeah. but yeah i don't know i have an i have a very big opinion <laughs> basically and when, did you, and when did you know that music was it in terms of like following that as a career do you know what i've always been this really annoying person maybe it, uh, not to bring horoscopes and stuff into it but i think that coming from being a virgo right i like to know what i'm doing i hate surprises i just need to, like even when it, my google calendar is incredibly organized like <laughs> i have to know everything that's happening 
every surprise parties are out of the question for me for my whole life like don't do it I'll be actually really pissed off like I like to know what's going on so when I was a kid I used to always say to my mom I'd be like mom like I know you, you want me to be my own person but like just tell me what you want me to be and then I'll be it like <laughs> I'll I'll try really hard at science and be a doctor or you know something like that and my mom was so anti that like to the point um she she was born and raised a catholic like very religious family background but she refused to baptize me because she was like you need to make your own decision so as you mm. can see very opinionated yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like i had to figure out everything for myself um so yeah wait what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> baptism <laughs> Well, we're talking about like when did you know like music was it yeah, yeah so basically she was just like yeah i'm not going to tell you what you need to be you need to figure that out for yourself and then when i was at an equestrian school long long story yeah your face <laughs> i'm dead yeah so i went to um yeah i went to a, a boarding school in leeds um where we rode horses we'll get into that another time yeah. um I used to think I wanted to get into fashion journalism. I knew I wanted to write because I felt like that was the one thing I was very good at. Like English, you can just kind of chat shit and get great grades. Like you just pretend you know what you're talking about and you get an A and I was like very good at chatting shit. Probably helps me a lot in music to be fair, but like, yeah, I used to want to write. So I thought, oh, Gossip Girl was like a thing at the time, I guess. Like <laughs> I thought I wanted to be a fashion journalist. So. If I put my mind to anything, I will make sure I'm very fucking good at it. Mm. So I ended up getting a, I like won an internship or something really weird at um, Teen Vogue. I was like 15, just turning 16. So me and my mum flew out there for like three days. This is such a long wind winded answer. I'm sorry. But Please, um, yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a podcast, right? Yeah. So it's fine. Um, yeah. So was in New York for three days um met vera wang like she touched my hair my hair's naturally like very very curly so yeah. she she touched my hair and i was kind of like can i touch yours and, like <laughs> it was a very interesting um experience yeah sat down in some really cool seminars met a lot of designers and then i met anna wintour and we kind of had i got the opportunity to, and this is when i was like skipping a seminar so it's like i should not have met her but i ended up meeting her and then we were just kind of asking it was me and a couple of girls i've made friends with and we were just asking her questions and i remember her kind of saying to me because i was 16 like i don't know what the equivalent is in america but like because you do that whole high school junior i don't fucking know no college we're, we're from toronto i mean we're from canada so okay it's like yes, a different but isn't it the same school. like junior is high it? school yeah. college so our college is like what is it Jevin? is it like 17 18 yeah from the age of about 17 i think it is that's when you start college. it's okay. all very confusing yeah. but basically i was 16 about to do my a levels which basically depicts what you do at university, where you go, like very stressful age to be. Um, and I was really trying to figure out my life. So I was asking her when she knew that she wanted to, you know, do this like as a career, um, because I was saying to her, I wanted to go to Oxford. I wanted to study English and do all of this like stuff. And she was kind of like, I didn't go to university. Anna Wintour did not go to university. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she did not go to university and she's killing it. And she decided that instead, and obviously back in the day, this was way less of a thing than it is now, but she wanted to just like experience it firsthand and like work for people and get your knowledge that way. Um, and she was like, she basically said along the lines of like, when you, when you know what you want to do and like, you can almost like, do it for free for the rest of your life or like mm. without even thinking like what you would do for the rest of your life and you'd be amazing at it like would it be fashion journalism and i remember being on the plane home from that trip and being like fuck no <laughs> <laughs> look at me on a track seat like nah it was that was so forced i'm not blair waldorf like i'm not in gossip girl like nah none of that so like <laughs> for me it was always music like always has been always will be it's just something I'm naturally. <laughs> Are you dying? <laughs> I've leveled off. Gossip Girl was an amazing time. 
yeah i never finished it though it kind of got trash but anyway hold tight netflix um yeah so yeah for me it was just music it was like if i had to do something for the rest of my life and like dedicate the rest of my life to doing something really well it would be music because i i would do that for free like i literally kill i used to live in like a village so like i would track all the way to london to go to a gig and then like me and my friends would hang out in a mcdonald's until we could get a train home the next you know wow. like <laughs> things you would like sacrifice your safety to like be involved in you know what i'm saying um so yeah since i was 16 i knew that was it still thought i wanted to be a journalist so went into music journalism for a bit and kind of started a blog and yeah so i guess like 16 yeah when i was 16 i realized that it was music i wanted to do wow that's crazy so. such a long fucking answer <laughs> <laughs> i know but like most people don't know what they want to do at 16 like i like yeah. always since i was a kid i have to know what i'm doing yeah <laughs> yeah and it's like um um does um growing up in london or did you did you grow up in london hell to the no where'd you grow up uh everywhere my life's a bit of a remix i'm not gonna lie like um i've pretty much lived in every part of england <laughs> and i've lived in two different parts of the caribbean so uh, i lived in st vincent and the grenadines for a bit very very untouched when i lived there like imagine spending like half your summer running through sugarcane fields and like <laughs> learning how to sail and like picking conch up off of a beach and like an old rasta man like teaching you how to make fishing rods and like fishing and shit and then coming to spend like the rest of the summer in the uk like in the countryside like on bikes like making dens and stuff yeah but yeah i've i've lived everywhere i moved to london when i was 17 because i fucking hated the countryside yeah. like i was always a city girl um at heart and um yeah never wanted to leave as soon as i got here i was like yeah mom i'm never coming home mm -hmm. sorry yeah came here for school um and just because i'd started blogging while i was still at school in the middle of nowhere and um, <laughs> I'd caught the attention of MTV and somewhere else, SBTV. So I'd started writing for them. So I'd somehow convinced my parents that that meant that like it was worth me moving to London to do. And my dad, who I didn't really have an incredible relationship with, he'd moved to London. So I'd like begged him. I was like, this would be a great time for <laughs> us to get to know each other. Like, just let me live with you. So somehow convinced him and then came here and i think i had about 30 percent attendance for the most of my uh college experience now college here isn't uni oh. so college here is high school college right? is high yeah high whatever school, that yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 before you go to university, university. Yeah, yeah. yeah um so yeah yeah i was just out like blogging for free for these brands working part-time a retail store like three days a week calling in sick most of the time i'm not gonna lie i don't know how i had that job like they should have <laughs> fired me time ago but um yeah at gigs writing i sacrificed every single weekend um i had when i was 17 um to write the blog for mtv mm. with the editor so yeah i had no life but fuck it I'm here now. <laughs> yeah. I'm here in platoon with Jevin <laughs> and you guys, so it worked out. <laughs> and speaking, and speaking of being here now, I remember you trying to get into Silencio oh. in Paris to do <laughs> to do the DJ. Oh, I remember I I remember I saw you and I was like, and who I'm was too this nice. Who I'm was too. Did me? you see how nice I was? <laughs> yeah way too nice way too i was like, like excuse me i'm so sorry i'm djing like i'm not being a bitch like <laughs> i have to get in and they were just like hmm i'm yeah. not trying to let it happen and then someone was like yes i am djing too and i was like that's when i kind of snapped yeah. and i was like oh, okay cool well you guys have no fucking music then yeah and i just stood there and then i think someone what was his name he came out sort it out then i had to literally squeeze through like a gap this it was mad paris is mad fashion week is mad yes yeah, interesting oh t can you imagine yeah that could have been my life if i'd <laughs> have been a fashion journalist <laughs> fuck that no but now but you're sort of like in that world with what you do and like did you ever think you would be there um for me it's it's an interesting i was the one thing that i've been saying very frequently at the moment is that 
I don't like fashion. I just like the parties. Mm. <laughs> like the parties are great. It's usually a free bar. Goes on forever. Mad fun. Fashion people are fun as fuck. Like I really like DJing for that crowd. Um, especially in Paris. Paris in general is just a city where people really fucking appreciate hip hop. <laughs> yeah. More than like anything. Like I've I've never experienced a gig like I have in Paris. Like even when I've DJed, I played Chief Keef at this place called Wanderlust and it's like I could feel the ground moving. <laughs> it was incredible. And I've never experienced that anywhere else. So any excuse I have to go to Paris and DJ, I'm there. But I mean, I wouldn't really say I'm, I wouldn't even say I like sit on the fence between music and fashion. It's just like, I come from, I don't know, I come from a circle of like people that have started movements of their own so like for example the daily paper boys that booked me for silencio like i've been really good friends with um hussein and with jefferson for years um and now i'm kind of coming into my own they're throwing a party like they know i'm gonna kill it so mm. they're gonna book me and vice versa like yeah. it's more so a support system situation yeah, yeah it's a community yeah. more than like fashion you know yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I, we were in Paris too, and we we're talk. We're at the Pigalle store, and we're talking to this guy. He seems like a like a sage, oh, <laughs> like the way he was talking. Ahmed, like okay. super cool. He's I think he manages the store, and he was talking about something like visualization, mm. and like when it came to your career, is that was that something like you saying that you know what you wanted to do? Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think I, when you got the Kiss FM gig, yeah, I remember that something you oh god said that, that really lame massive. <laughs> an iphone note i posted about yeah, yeah, yeah. i knew i was gonna do it <laughs> but it's true it is true um as lame as it sounds um i'm like a massive massive believer of like affirmations and like making vision boards and writing down your goals because at the end of the day well it, it works like for me anyway just knowing your targets and then you can kind of break it down and work towards smaller things that can like help you achieve certain things but having a goal in mind i think is so important otherwise you're just gonna get really lost mm. with what you're doing i think my my goals never changed and like i haven't really attained half of like what i'm trying to do yet but i'm on the right path like i always <coughs> knew i wanted to go into broadcast journalism i knew i wanted to do presenting i knew i wanted to do radio um, it's just really fucking weird how it came about because like yeah. I never I never thought I'd be a DJ I was like I respected DJing so much I was fucking terrified of it <laughs> like when I grew up um there would like our coffee table in my house like from my baby videos was turntables because my dad was like really into like fucking around on like decks and shit like he was a massive like Jay Dilla Pete Rock wow just like hip hop stan yeah you're like yes my guy yeah <laughs> um he actually makes apps now but hey um yeah so for me i respected it way too much to touch it but then i was going through kind of like a dry spell um actually funnily enough you mentioned josephine earlier shouts out jmk um, <laughs> but, um we met when i was writing for uh, the same publication as her i was writing for this one publication and I was just, yeah, I was kind of fucking bored. Like, I don't know how to describe it. it. I always thought I wanted to be a writer and I was just really bored. And um, being 18, 19, you get really kind of stressed out and you kind of freak out because I decided I didn't want to go to university. And I was like, fuck, I'm fucking up my life kind mm. of situation. And then I just started um, to make these mixes online like literally on virtual dj <laughs> which is so joke like maybe maybe i should not admit that but yeah virtual <laughs> dj with a mouse and um i'd upload it onto soundcloud just as a way to like combat my anxiety because i have really bad anxiety <laughs> and at the time i just didn't know how to like tame it and that was the only thing like focusing on cool music i find on soundcloud and like throwing it all together and like i don't know having mm. fun with it i didn't realize that it could be so therapeutic but it was and i uploaded one it got like before it got taken down shout out soundcloud um, <laughs> um uh, i got like 50 or 60 thousand plays and i was like my first mix and i was like hmm so radar radio had just launched 
and Danny Seth actually um, knew the guy that launched it. So he gave me his email and I kind of just finessed the whole situation and made him think I was a DJ. Jeez. So he was like, yeah, come through. Like, of course you can have a show. Um, got there and he was like, cool. So what do you use? Serato, vinyl, USBs, like what? And I was like, nah, I just need an aux cord. And nobody has ever looked at me with such disgust, like to this day. Like he was so shocked. He was like, oh, no. He was like, yeah, today you're learning. So that was kind of, Shouts out to Ollie because without Ollie, my rent would not be paid as easily <laughs> as it is now through DJing. But yeah. like, yeah, he um he kind of forced he kind of forced me to learn how to DJ. Still, like, I was not interested in learning that. I was too scared. With me, I've always been quite a perfectionist with things. I think I've I've held off a lot. I definitely don't do it anymore, and that was a great learning experience for me. But I used to put off things because I'd be like, oh, it's not time yet. Like mm. maybe when this has happened, then I'll do this. Or like I'd always put things off until I was perfect at something. Yeah. And um, I literally was on radar every single week. Like, hi, <laughs> like just fucking up the mix terribly. Like trying to learn as I went along because Ollie was pushing me to do it and put together these songs I like. And I'm here, so it worked. And yeah. I got my radio show and like without that, I wouldn't have got there. So it's like, I didn't necessarily have that on my vision board, but I did have that I wanted to be, I wanted to have my own, I wanted to have, I want to have the best radio show in the UK, like for hip hop facts. Like I want to be the new Westwood. I want to be the new set. I want to be that part. Well, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I want to be my own version of that, but still have that much, um, you know, importance on our scene and like our mm. culture. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess that was just, from having that vision, all of that kind of fell into place and happened. And I didn't even know I needed that, but I did. So <laughs> shouts out Ollie. So when you talk about vision board and goals, I'm yeah. curious, break down like the process to attaining a goal. Like you have a goal, let's say our goal, we're, our goal, our big goal this year is like, we're making a print magazine for the first time, right? Nice. And right Jeez. now, I know. So. This is what all the pictures are for. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> might want to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we we broke down. Okay, what do we need to like mm. um, achieve that? Right? What does it look like? What does breaking down a goal look like in your world? Um, again, not to go back to astrology, but I am. So <laughs> being a Virgo, I'm such an overthinker. Like I will overthink everything to the tenth degree. Like you could literally be like hi how are you and i'd be like why are they asking me that thing like like all these different things will come up in my head so i don't know being like oh i, I want to have a radio show for me i've always been a, i feel like that's probably why i'm good with like brand strategy for other people or helping people with their rollouts or their pr or like what i think will work for certain things mm -hmm. because i can kind of break shit down into small smaller pieces and build it back together so like i don't know how to explain it really uh uh prime example so you've done a podcast with caroline um i met caroline i met caroline in a pub in clapham <laughs> a couple of years ago when she was working with a guy called bonkers and they were playing me some music because at the time to get through school i was doing freelance pr um just from knowing all of the bloggers really and again kind of knowing what would suit certain artists like for certain things so started working well we had a meeting met with her met with Anne. really got on was drinking green tea in a pub it was very weird it was great and they started playing me some music from bonkers again going back to me being very opinionated i was kind of not really feeling a lot of it so i asked them if they had anything that was a bit more like uk because mm -hmm. i felt like a lot of the stuff they were playing me wasn't and um they played me about three seconds of this track called we run the block like stopped it <laughs> and i was like okay this has to be the next song that comes out and it's just like in that moment i knew exactly like how i could see his rollout panning mm. out so i was like okay don't put this anywhere like i was like you need to like look it's fashion week like everyone's jumping on uk shit at the moment you need to make sure virgil has this like benji b has this like all the cool like tastemakers of the moment like at these because you see the pies like you mm -hmm. see how many people are outside it's really important and actually that and i feel like art in general 
art imitates art. So like that for me came from being inspired by Kate Trinata and mm. um, Kate Trinata and Hudson Mohawk. Yeah, Hudson Mohawk and Kate Trinata. So Hudson Mohawk had chimes and Kate Trinata played chimes at XOYO and I had no fucking idea what the song was, but I kept hearing it everywhere. Like Benji B was playing it at Deviation. Like I just could not stop hearing the song, but it wasn't on the radio. It wasn't anywhere. I was just hearing it at parties. And then when it fucking came out on the Apple commercial, I was like, oh my days, like <laughs> lost my mind. So that was almost my inspiration behind that idea with Bonkers. I was like, make sure all the DJs have it. Then you need to make sure all the radio pluggers are co-signing it. Like, you know, the targets, the Charlie Sloths, like the Mr. Jams over here, like you need that. And then from there, you kind of build up all of this anticipation and then you drop it. Mm. And that was just from like hearing a song for three seconds and being like, I see everything. Like, yeah. that's just how I am. Um, unfortunately, I'm not like that for myself. <laughs> like, that's a bit more difficult, but with other people, I've always been pretty good. Would you say, would you, would you say yes or no to that, Jevin? Of me being quite good at like hearing other people's ideas and natural A and R. Now I'm saying, <laughs> hire me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think there's, there's not many like A&Rs to this day that can that can hear a song and say yeah that's that's, all, mm -hmm. that's it. We're Tiff, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cough cough rams barking. <laughs> Knew that would chart. Tiff, Tiff supported my music as well, even though I'm not like this one is based on my sound. So. Wow. Gold Link, new Gold Link when he had about 2000 followers. Taku, Kate Shinada. Wow. I used to I started doing some stuff with Soul Action for a while Sam Galatry and me are really good friends because I showed Joe K Sam um, and I was like you need to sign this kid he's like 12 and incredible <laughs> 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 but um, yeah it just comes from like a it's just something in me like I'll hear something or I'll there's just a gut feeling and then a million ideas come from like one feeling it's weird yeah, yeah. so if somebody so now they've We've broken down the gold for like <laughs> in your world if somebody wants to sort of step in your world like be like the next tiffany calver or be that version never gonna happen no, i'm <laughs> kidding how does that how does that happen <laughs> to be the next me oh god uh like a 12 year old have insomnia definitely have insomnia um for a while so that you can stay up and work your ass off uh I don't even I don't even know like how would you be the next me do you know what I feel like it's not even about being the next me I feel like to just put yourself in a, a position similar to mine or to Caroline or to Jevin or to any of us even to like new currency like people that are really doing stuff it's just all about doing it for yourself like everything I do I'm I've always been like this I've never looked at other people as competition it's a great mindset to have if you think about it like even when it comes to like dj beef or like radio beef <laughs> or like any of this stuff you know i never look at another dj as an opposition because at the end of the day when i'm 80 years old and like i've had my life we're not even going to know each other like yeah. what i do in in this lifetime is completely different to what you're doing so why should i be focused on your shit like i can be inspired or motivated like 100 percent. like somebody can take a like a massive w and i'll be like shit i wish that was me like mm -hmm. how do i do that and then i just work my ass off for it but i think it just really comes down to like naturally having that fire in you that just won't go out like yeah i remember being like a teenager thankfully it's not really like that anymore i can definitely sleep now <laughs> i don't have insomnia but i literally couldn't sleep like i be in bed trying to sleep before school the next day and I'd be like oh but I could be awake right now like drafting emails or like doing something or like making this blog post or writing something or I don't know enhancing like my chances of doing well somehow mm. so I think it's it's just about naturally being so passionate about something that it's like by any means necessary and you'll find your way like 100% but a lot of people like lack the confidence in um making a goal happen mm. and like i'm the shyest person ever <laughs> like i'm not even gonna lie like even i was djing the other day and someone was like oh just get on the mic 
and um tell everyone to like there's free drinks and i was like i can't like you hired the wrong one like i literally jump in it like it's so hard and i get it because i get dms all the time where they're like how did you do it like i don't know how to get involved or like blah 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 and it's genuinely like i always <laughs> describe this feeling to when i was a kid and i'd run into um a a fucking freezing pool like you know it's cold so you're just gonna jump mm. right and you know it's gonna shock you but it's almost like as you go to do it you're subconsciously doing it like you're not literally going okay i'm gonna jump now you kind of trick yourself and throw yourself in so when i do anything like everything i have re like i have really bad anxiety i don't think i'm stressing <laughs> this enough like everything i do i should not be doing like yeah. for my mental health i should not be doing any of this stuff but it's fight or flight like you've just got to kind of jump like yeah and do it and if there's anything i've learned like i said like i used to be such a perfectionist and then from my experience with just like <clears throat> doing radio and throwing myself into it it's just like fail <laughs> like just fail fail and then learn from it and keep going like that's the only way you're gonna excel at anything like until i started failing and fucking up and making a fool of myself like i didn't know how to <laughs> not do that so yeah. just jump into a really really cold pool yeah basically yeah it's interesting, <laughs> it's interesting you say that because like i've always one of my goals was like to always like like do a party in london yeah and i was like uh, and then me and the team last year we came to london last year that's when we interviewed caroline mm -hmm. And then I was like, fuck it. Like, let's see if I can just make this happen. I was like, I don't know anybody out here. But, yeah. and then we, um, I found this venue called the Alibi. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I was yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> so I, I found the Dalston. Alibi. I, I found the Alibi. I emailed the guy and we did like a Skype thing. And he was like, um, actually, that's when I was thinking of booking you. Aww. Because, because <laughs> <laughs> I remember. would have been so much lower as well <laughs> last year. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> then I, I was like, I asked, I asked, who did I, con who did I contact? Shane Crosby is my fr a friend oh, of mine. Oh, sick. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So Shane was supposed, because the, the, the whole concept yes, was to bring, yeah. was to bring like a Toronto DJ and then have local DJs here do it. Yeah. And then Shane was like, yo, I'm like, yo, Shane, did you like contact Tiffany? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, he told me he yeah, was he's coming. Like, he's like, oh, she didn't get back to me. I was like, fuck. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then Raph Hardy was down. Yeah. So we did a Raph Hardy. And like, I remember like, so we brought Raph Hardy. We brought our own DJ from Geno. Okay. He did it with us. And then I remember at like 9 p.m. there was nobody there. 10 mm. p.m. there was nobody there. Oh, I know this anxiety like, oh. so well. And then 11 p.m. it just snapped. It was like mad. Like it was crazy. Yeah. But like that's one like one like um, goal that we really wanted to do. And I feel like <clears throat> I don't know. It's just like having no fear. But like I don't know why oh my people. God. Having the most fear in yeah. the world. Yeah. Like, because it's how you channel that fear. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like even me to this day like. I threw a party last year and usually like for the most part all of my parties sell out but this one event I did so last minute like I was just it was to it's cool I wanted to um raise money for charity so I threw this party and I was like oh I'm sure it's fine like everything usually happens anyway like kind of got quite lazy with it I was like yeah. oh I'll be fine whatever did it I think about I think about maybe like 60 people showed up like it was on okay it was like on a wednesday which is like that's a reach for sure in london but like not that many people came at all and then this year i was like fuck it i'm gonna do it again so i actually it was worse so there's this but <laughs> this is the most random story and i'm sorry for baiting you out daniel but i have to do it so there's this footballer called daniel sturridge and he's a good friend of mine and he must have texted me a selfie of him and takashi 69 and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, this is the weirdest combo ever I've ever seen in my life. So he was like, oh yeah, he's here. Like they want to throw a listening party and I, I recommended you, like, can you help them? And I was like, okay, but if I'm helping them, like, I'm just going to throw a party. And he was like, cool. I was like, okay, I'm making it for free. He was like, cool. So in under 24 hours, I somehow with the help of many friends, locked down a venue, got a flyer made, got Octavian Essie, <coughs> House of Pharaohs, Slow Tie, like wow. the hottest like performers in London right like right now to agree to do this for free as a favor to me, um, to help me uh, support 
this guy. So in under 24 hours, I had over a thousand people outside a venue that fit 250 people. The hate mail I got was mad, but I tell you what, it was so worth it. Like, Jeez, that's mad. But you know, it's, yeah. again, just go and do it, go yeah. jump. Cold Let work. fear lead you. <laughs> <laughs> so would you, <laughs> question I always ask people is like, would you say you're successful? Um, I'm a work in progress. Mm. I think, I think one thing for me is I don't define success necessarily on things I've achieved. It's more about my state of happiness. Like it sounds super lame, but from my many, I've literally lived about 17 lives in my one life. <laughs> um, and one thing I've noticed from, you know, being around people that are super broke, like in the hood or being around these people at this posh boarding school that I'm at and then going on mummy and daddy's yacht, like <laughs> with them on their summer holidays and stuff. And then going back to the hood to see my grandma. And like, you know, it's I've, I've literally, been around so many people successful people people that just did not want to do anything with their lives ever and the one thing that's always stuck out to me is that throughout all of life's roller coasters it's what's important to you um and it's your happiness like i the happiest people i've ever met are like cleaners in a hotel like my grandma is one of the happiest people i've ever met and she is like 70 and still like as a cleaner in a hotel like mm. she just doesn't want to stop cleaning i'm like grandma you don't need to do that no more like it's cool like you can chill now like enjoy being 70 and she's like i really like doing it like it's it's the simple thing so i'm a work in progress when it comes to my own success because i'm still figuring out the elements that make me at peace and like very happy my work makes me very happy and i feel like in that sense I'm still a work in progress, but I am successful because I'm achieving everything I want to achieve. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Who's calling me? Makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's it's a work in progress. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm successful yet. We got work to do. Word. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, dope. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, Thank you for dope. having me. Yeah. Jeez, it's dope.